Alright, we're back for another painting tutorial. This time on the Rotbringer Sorcerer. Um, a little bit delayed because he was delayed in the mail, but nonetheless he's here now. So let's get started. We're going to start with Plague Bearer Flesh. There are going to be some similarities to the Putrid Blight King tutorial that I already put out, but some differences as well. Um, we are starting the same though. We're going to put Plague Bearer Flesh on the skin. Um, but instead of doing a second coat of Plague Bearer Flesh, like we did in, or like we did for the, uh, what's his face? The Future Blood King. We're going to do something else. So I'm just going to put this all over his skin and then we're going to let him fully dry because I want to try out the next step on this skin before I do anything else. So once that's dry, we will come back and I'll do that. Alright, we're back and our Plague Bearer flesh is all dry. I'm just going to point out, uh, make sure to get the feet when you paint the skin and this appendage right here is a uh, part of his skin as well. Alright, now we're going to move on to Gullum and Flesh. And we're going to put this over the spots we just painted Plague Bearer Flesh. And the reason we do this is to sort of uh, ground this guy in a little more human... So my paint closes. A little little closer to humanity than, uh, than perhaps the Putrid Blight Kings or Plague Bearers or something like that. He's still... He's still messed up. He's still got... Nurgle's touch, but uh, he's he's a little closer to just a regular old human. Um, you could just put this golem and flesh on, but putting the pale green under it really helps to sell the fact that he's got some problems underneath his skin. It gives us this like slight sickly glow about it that uh, makes it look quite nice in my opinion. So just applying this everywhere that we put the green. Trying to stay off the other parts but it's light enough that uh, we'll be fine if it gets on something a little bit. Just make sure we get that and then get all the little bits here on each side. There. Just make sure that's all covered. And under there, and back here. Alright. So then we're just gonna let that dry for a bit, come back, and we'll start in on the other details. Alright, that's all nice and dry. Now we're just gonna do a one of the smaller steps, but no less required than the rest of them. We're going to use some Griffhound Orange, and we're just going to do the wood on his scythe. Uh, and any other wood that happens to be on him. I don't think there is any other, but I will confirm. And I can be pretty messy up here because everything else up there is going to be metal. And so we'll paint that later. But around his skin here, I want to be pretty careful. I want to be careful not to get my brush on his face up there. And get it all the way around here. Oh, I said I don't think there's any other wood on it. Yeah, there's just this giant back piece here that's all wood. No big deal. So yeah, we'll get that as well. Just gonna get the scythe first though. Get that all squared away. It might have been his finger I just painted over, but you know. It's fine. Details like that I really don't bother going back and fixing because 
If someone wants to look at this guy's finger and be like, Oh, you didn't paint his finger. Then they're welcome to. But I personally don't care. I'll touch up that little bit of orange mess up there when I, as I'm letting this dry. But for now, I'm just going to get the other wood here. I want to try to avoid the straps if I can. But if it's not possible, I can always just go back over them with a little bit of wraith bone before I do the strap color later. So I'm just going to do the rest of the wood here and triple check that there's not anything else on him that should be made of wood. And then once all that's dry, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. Alright, our orange is dry or drying. And now we're going to use some Dark Angels Green. And this is going to be on all the cloth on this guy. There's a lot of parts in and around the cloth that uh, I'm sure we're going to hit. So there'll probably be a pretty large touch-up step after this one. But nothing wrong with that. As long as you plan ahead and do it properly, no big deal. I'm just getting all the cloth here but like all this parchment and stuff this is going to be a different color so i'm going to come back and touch that up we could also paint it with layer paint which we may do we shall see just notice there's part of his leg right here well i'll have to fix that i'll uh his leg comes out of his robe right here and comes down i'll uh I'll do that while the screen is drying. I'll touch that up. No problem. But for now, we're just going to get all the cloth in here. Just want to avoid anywhere where we already have color, obviously. And we want to make sure we get a nice smooth application of this all the way down the cloth. All the way to the base. Get a little bit on the foot, not a big deal. It's again one of those details I don't bother touching up. It's such a minor thing that does not bother me. Especially after we do basing and everything. Like No one's going to be looking at the top of his foot. nooks and crannies here. Down there. Alright, and then of course there's his hood and stuff up here. Just come down in here, avoiding both the wood and his skin. And then in here, the same thing. A little bit of wiggle room below this because there's chain and stuff there that is going to be metal. So if we hit that with green, it's not a problem. But yeah, I'm just going to uh, finish up the cloth here. Just make sure I get all the way up and under this hood. And then all the little folds under this piece of armor here. And then I'll let that dry, and either while that's dry or right after, I'll go in and do his leg. Just add some wraith bone back on top. And then put the two contrast colors back on. Just like before. And then once all that is nice and dry, or at least almost dry, we'll come back and we'll do the next step. Alright, and we're back, and as, I, as soon as I hit go on the camera, I f forgot to do the leg. I touched everything else up, forgot to do the leg. I'll get to that leg eventually, but for now, we're going to use two browns in this step. We're going to first use Skeleton Horde, and then Snakebite Leather. So we're going to start with Skeleton Horde, and that's going to go on the parchment on his waist. I'm just going to basically dunk it completely in... Uh, this color. Just 
make sure to apply it smoothly to uh, this big flat section here. Make sure it gets in there. And make sure it gets on the edge there. And if it gets on the green, like you see here, it's not a problem. It's so light and it won't be able to be seen. So make sure we have a good amount of pigment on the side there. There we go. And then we're going to grab the snake bite leather. And that's going to be for, you guessed it, the leather. So start with the pouch here. It's easy and big. Just avoiding everything else as best I can. Alright, and then we have these straps here. If a little bit spills over onto the orange, it's not a big deal because it'll just look like shading. But we don't want to completely just go willy-nilly all over the orange. So we'll go slowly. I'm not exactly 100% sure what this box back here is made of. But I was thinking about doing it in leather, but I think I won't. I think it'll be metal. So I think that'll be it for the leather on this guy. This is going to be a different color in a bit. So yeah, that'll do it. We'll let this dry. Actually, you know what? While we're here, we can do the next quick step. And that's just to grab some Aethermatic Blue. and do the armor. Only this one armor panel on him, so we'll just do that real quick. We'll do a second coat at some point, but just for obviously only one at a time, especially with contrast paint, so we don't want it to tear the surface or anything. And you know, I think I'm going to do this backpack in this blue as well. There's obviously a lot of metal detail on it, but I think for the main color, we're going to use this blue. And we darken this down with uh, some null oil later and all that, but for now, we'll just do this. Might have to touch that little bit of orange up and then reapply the blue, we'll see. But I'll let that dry. Let the shoulder pad dry, do a second coat of that. Once that's dry, we'll come back and do the next step. All right, we're back and that's all nice and dry. Now we're gonna move on to the fly as he's using as a belt buckle. And for that, we're gonna use some Magos Purple. We're gonna use some layer paint on top of this later, but we're gonna start with Magos Purple. And just put it all over the skull and the wings here. Just like that. Make sure we get it all all the way up to the green and up to his skin. We'll cover that all up. Alright, and with that, I think we are done with the contrast portion of this miniature. So I'll make sure everything is nice and dry, completely set up, and then we'll come back and we'll start in on the layer paint. All right, we're back and all our contrast paint is nice and dry. And now we're gonna move on to our first layer paint, or in this case, a base paint. Mornfang Brown is what it's gonna be. And we're just gonna paint this onto all the metal. And if you watch the um, Putrid Blight King video, we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna paint this on first. As soon as I correct my paintbrush, it's got an errant bristle. There we go. We're gonna paint this onto all the metal and then overbrush it with silver. And that gives a quick and easy 
Um, quick and easy corroded metal. There's a lot of ways to do corroded metal. There's a lot of better ways to do corroded metal, but in terms of quick, if you want to do a whole bunch of miniatures at once, or you just want to get a single miniature done really quickly, this is the best way I've found. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just being careful to go around this, uh, this wood as much as possible. Just wipe it off there. Come back in. So this is going to be, I'm obviously going to finish that up, but what else we need to paint is all the backpack detail here. So these hooks, these belt buckles, spikes here. And then all this stuff over here. Not the candles, but we are going to paint them with a layer paint. Maybe a base paint. Regardless, not a contrast paint. So I don't have to be too careful around them. But then also all the detail on this backpack here. So I'm just going to do a little bit of it. And then I'll come back in with the smaller brush and finish it off. Um, let's see what else... I think that's it actually. The spikes, backpack detail, the rest of the scythe, and that'll be good to go. So I'll finish this up, uh, make any touch-ups that are required on anything else, and then we'll come back after this is nice and dry and do the overbrushing. Alrighty, we're actually going to do a couple things before we do the metal. We're going to use Morngast Bone first on uh, the candles and on the bones on this guy and then we're going to use Katie and flesh tone to do some skin highlights so we'll start with this Morgast bone first and like I said we're going to do the actual bone so that's like toenails slash claws and possibly teeth and fingernails if they are modeled Oh, and then he's got these little spikes right here. And I'm just noticing I need to do the chain going around his chest in that bro or that brown before we go on to the silver, so I'll do that as well. So there's the bone. I'm also going to do the candles, but I just want to show you what colors we're doing here before I go and finish it off. So we're just doing these dots, these like pustules or pimples or whatever on his skin. We're doing those in this Cadian flush tone. And then just going to highlight around his face a little bit with this color. And just make sure to get all of these. So I'll do finish this up and get any more spots that need to be bone colored. And then we'll come back, and I think then for real that time, when I come back, we'll do the silver. Alright, we're back, and it's time to do the metal. And so for that, we're going to use Iron Hand Steel. And I'm going to get some on the brush, and then wipe some of it off. But not completely off, like dry brushing you would. And then we're just going to come in... And this is called overbrushing. So we're meaning to get full coverage where the brush hits, but the brush isn't hitting everywhere. So we're just coming in, as you can see. We're getting full coverage in the spots the brush does hit, but the brush doesn't hit everything, and so that part stays brown. So we're just gonna do this on all the spots we already painted brown, just being careful around this blue. This. And you can do this as much or as little as you want, really. The more corroded it, or the less silver you get on it, the more corroded it will look. So we're just going to do this everywhere we have brown. Get one of these buckles. Get one of these bits here. And then just touch it onto these uh, these rivets or nail heads here. 
And if you don't hit one, then that one just looks extra corroded. No big deal. So I'm just going to keep working around here, making sure to hit every bit of the model that we had intended to be metallic. And I'm saving the, uh, saving this for last, because it'll be the, uh, it'll take this technique pretty much the best here, so we'll go ahead and move on to it. So then we're going to take our brush and just go along the side like this. As you can see, it leaves it Leaves the brown in the uh, pock marks, but puts it down on the flat areas. And spin it around and do the same thing. Just trying to avoid the orange as much as possible. And there we go. So that's our silver. Oh, not quite. We got a couple of rivets up here. Just gonna tap them lightly. There we go. And that's our silver done. Now we're just going to go straight into some Yend and Yellow. And this is going to be for the wicks and the smoke on the candles. So put this in right in like that. And then when we add our... Um, when we add our washes later, we'll put some black wash in there. So that'll help that smoke look more like smoke. Alright, so that's that, and I think we'll just stick right with it and go straight into our next color as well. That's going to be War Boss Green. Just kind of got some War Boss Green on the name, but I promise it is War Boss Green. And we're going to take this, and I'm going to use my thin brush this time. And just on the edges of his cloak here, anywhere that an edge exists, I'm just going to gonna make little hash marks just to make it look a little tattered so right up here just gonna come in and do this make it look a little messed up in there and then around all the holes in it just kind of Stipple this around. The paint closed on me. Some of, sometimes these Citadel pots will close. Then we're just going to come down on the bottom here and do the same thing. Just make it look tattered. And we'll work all the way around here. He's got some some rips and stuff up there. So this is sort of like an edge highlight. You can imagine it. We're putting it in the same places you might put an edge highlight. We're just putting it in a lot rougher because this cloth would be torn and tattered. And then we're going to do the same thing going up these kind of folds in the cloth. I'm just going to kind of stipple my brush along on these bits so that we get a highlight but it's a, a very rough highlight like that and a little too much paint on the brush I'm trying to keep not a lot of paint on the brush so we don't get gobs of paint all over it work our way up on all these and we'll do the same thing on the front and then of course on the hood Going a little more aggressive on the hood just because it's near the top of the miniature and so it'll catch people's attention so I want it to be just a little bit lighter so I'll add more of this war boss green in. Alright so then 
I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna let this dry. Get that all nice and locked in, and then we'll come back and do the next step of green. All right, we're back, and our green is dry or drying. And now we're gonna go on to moot green. We're gonna do the same thing we just did with the war boss green, but we're gonna do it with not as much paint on the brush. So I'm just gonna wipe most of it off on the edge here. And then just come in and hit these same edges with this. Not necessarily gonna hit every single edge again, but at least the most prominent ones I will. And doesn't have to be on every single bit of the edges. You can kind of alternate the war boss green and the moot green, and that'll work just fine. Just get some more paint on the brush here, and then wipe some of it off. Just come back in here, and then we'll do up here on the edge of the a little too much there, I'll just wipe that off and come back in that's better get that edge there and then get those edges there there we go and now we have our nice tattered green robes with a contrast paint and two simple stippling techniques. So I think I'll go straight into the next color now and that's going to be Dachala Lilac and we're gonna put this on the wings and skull here on the front and basically I'm just gonna paint in everywhere that isn't a recess on these. Um, you could probably just leave these the uh, pink that the contrast paint made them but I just want a little more definition, so I'm just going to paint them in. Doing my best to avoid the recesses so the contrast paint stays down in there. There we go. That'll do. Alright, and then I'm just going to look at the miniature. See what else might need to be done, and I think... We're basically done, except for a couple washes. So I'm going to do the first one right here, but then we'll let it dry and come back and do the others. I'm going to start with Magos Purple. And this is my sort of rotted flesh color that I like to use, or bruised flesh, damaged flesh. I'm just going to put it in a couple places on the skin here. Just kind of maybe around where these pimples are on his arm up here. I still have to do that chain. I'll do that in a minute also. <laughs> but I'll just wipe some of it away if you get too much on there. And this weird appendage, maybe on his feet a little bit. And this one back here. There we go. And then maybe down here on the folds of his stomach. And then on his face. And that'll work for that. So, I'll stop it here, uh, let all this dry, I'll do the chain on his chest that I keep forgetting to do, and then we'll come back, add some Null Oil, some Agrax Earthshade, and we'll call him done. Alright, we're back with everything all mostly dry, and we even did the chain. So, the first thing we're going to do is start with some Null Oil. And this is going to go on his, the wood here, the wood on his back, the candles, and the green. Alright, we're back with everything almost dried up, uh, including the chain that we did in the break. Now we're going to add some Null Oil, the second to last step here. And we're going to put this on the orange, so the wood, the blue, the armor, and the backpack. Uh, as well as the candles and the flame and smoke coming off the candles. 
Everything else, we're going to leave for the Agrax Earthshade. So I'll start here with the wood. And this, uh, this black will really help tone down this orange and make it more of a realistic color. Not necessarily anything unrealistic about orange wood in the crazy world of Age of Sigmar, but still it does look, a, at least to me, it looks a little too orange to be realistic. So uh, this will help knock it back just a little bit. Still preserving the orange color, but not being so in your face. And then we'll put it on the green, like I said, and then all over these candles. And if we get some of this on the metallic back here, it's not the end of the world. We're going to put Agrax on the metallic, but if there's a little bit of null oil on it also, not a huge deal. Just want to make sure we really get it in the candles. Help dull them down just a little bit and make that smoke a little more believable. We could spend quite a bit more time really working on those candles and making them look more realistic, but... It's not the kind of channel this is, and it's not the kind of paint job this is. So. Get that on there. Alright. So that will do for that. I think I'm actually going to do... He sort of has two sets of robes here. This, like, under robe and then the over robe. I think the over robe is just the robe folded down. But I'm going to put black on the folded down part, and then I'm going to put brown on the other part. Don't know if it's going to do much, but just to mix them up a little bit. Alright, now we'll go on to the Agrax Earthshade. Assuming I can find it here. Here it is. Agrax Earthshade. And we're going to put this on everything else, except we are not going to put it on the skin. We want the skin to stay the color it is. So we're going to leave it. But all this stuff down here, these wings, just dull that purple just a tiny bit. And this. And this, uh, this wash on the green especially will help the highlights pop out that we already did, as well as giving some deeper shadows on that stuff. I'm going to do it on these scrolls, make them look a little more beat down and old. I'm going to do it on all the metal. This brown instead of black will really sell the effect that they're corroded. Just get it on here. And then these, of course. Get it on this leather pouch here. We forgot to do black down here on this little bit of orange, so I'll just do it with brown. Not the end of the world. Let me get this chain here. We did it the last second. Oh, and there's some primer I left in there, so I'll just shove some brown ink in there. and No one will ever notice that. It's fine. Don't tell anyone. And then up here on the scythe. I'm going to put it on pretty heavy on the scythe, because we really want that to shift towards the brown instead of silver to show how gnarly and messed up it is and then we just have the hood up here and the cowl or whatever that is get right in there and just a little bit more right there and just a tiny bit in the mouth and I think we'll call him done so Right about now, you should be seeing him all done up and uh, with a base on it, at least a rudimentary one. Probably just a color and some tufts, but that'll do for this paint job. But yeah, pretty simple paint job. Got some color on there. I think uh, Nurgle is a good place to introduce some color. Even though they are just a bunch of rotting bodies, popping some color like some blue, orange, purple in there can go a long way and helping them look pretty interesting. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you found it at least a little bit useful. Even if you didn't get any ideas of what to do, maybe you got some ideas of what not to do. Either way, hope it helped. Thank you everybody for watching. 
and I will see you next time.